Thank you all for checking in. Uh, and I'm playing actually a song that I got a lot of requests for last week. Well, I think at least two or three people uh, requested that I play this song. Uh, it goes like this, see if anyone knows it. So that's the, um, let me pause it. That's the melody of the song. I don't know if the person is here that requested it last time. Uh, it is, yeah, it's like a, it's a jazz song. Um, it's a specific jazz song, and it is very bluesy. It's not like an exact blues. Like a, a real a blues song is usually 12 measures long. Uh, this song is a little longer than that. It's uh, actually 32 bars long. I'll, maybe I'll play it a little bit later. I'll play it on saxophone. See if I don't recognize it, but I played the melody, and then I was also doing some improvisation. Improvisation is when, well, who can tell me what improvisation is? But I'm going to answer some questions, but check in. Let me know if you can tell me what jazz improvisation or improvisation uh, is. Give me a definition. In the meantime, I'm going to answer a question. Dr. Selfridge, whoops. What is the lowest note on tenor sax, and how do you play that note? That's easy, I can do that. Um, Dennis, uh, well, let's say hi to Dennis. Hi, Dennis. Hey, how you doing, Steve? Good. Um, Dennis, see if anyone comes in with a, um, a definition of uh, improvisation. I think Daniel O got it. If All right, you I'll look for it. Yeah. Um, and uh, there's also someone in the chat room who uh, has one of the best uh, screen names I've ever seen. Do you see that one, Dennis? Dr. Selfridge is the best. Do you see that one in our chat room? Yeah, I see it. I think they're just trying to butter me up, so I'll answer their question. I don't know about you. Um, I think so. Yeah, <laughs> but I like that name. So um, the lowest note, I have a saxophone right here. Someone just requested saxophone, and I'm going to answer the question that came earlier, which is what is the lowest note on the tenor saxophone? Does anyone out there know what the lowest note on tenor sax is? What's the lowest note on tenor sax? I'm going to play it right now. Geometry dash player 2638 got it. It's a low B flat. Good. Isaiah got it too. Uh, saxophoner man got it. It's B flat. It's also concert A flat on the piano. Um, so here's how you play it. Ready? You got your uh, regular middle B flat here. One, two, and the side key. But we're going to go down A, G, F, uh, E flat, D, there's our low C, and then we have to add in this one. You kind of have to really stretch your finger, your pinky, to play this low key here. It can be a little tricky to play because you're stretching out your fingers, and if any one of them slips off, and if anything's not right, it won't come out correctly. But here it is. <laughs> It's vibrating my whole room. And the reason it's the lowest note is because when you hit the low B flat key, it closes the last two keys on your saxophone. 
So all of the vibrations are coming through your entire saxophone. So that's a low B flat. There we go. Um, as I was explaining that, oh, Dennis, uh, let's see. Who did I say got the right answer? I think you copied it. Um, a, cu a couple of you got the right answer for improvisation. Um, let me go back in the chat and see if I can give some shout outs. Um, so Daniel O said it's making up your own part for the song. That's correct. Um, Dr. Selfridge is the best said improvisation is when you add a part into the music that wasn't there before. That is correct. So anyone who got along those lines of basically creating your own part from the music that you have to work with. Okay. Um, I'm going to keep an eye out for the questions coming through. Uh, but Dennis, did any, has anything jumped out at you as a good question so far? Yeah, one was a, in the beginning. It says, what instruments do the bass clarinet play in the band? Okay, that's a good question. Um, as I drink my sparkling water, which I, I like to, uh, like to uh, drink that, keeps you, it's, there's no calories in this. I love, I love the sparkling water. That's not a paid commercial, by the way. <laughs> um, so, the, what parts does the bass clarinet play? Um, well, bass clarinet usually gets its own part in concert band. Uh, in marching band, they usually don't have a marching bass clarinet. A bass clarinet player will switch over to tenor sax or maybe barry sax, uh, usually a reed instrument. Uh, but in a concert band, an orchestra, you get your own part that says bass clarinet on it. And usually you're, you're in the same realm as the, um, as the French horn, trombone, euphonium, somewhere in there is where the bass clarinet lives in the, the note range. So that's a good question. Um, let's see. And I also, that was also kind of King, uh, King Chino 15, what's the important role of the bass clarinet? I kind of answered that question for you. Jonathan Melchor is asking how, tips for cleaning a clarinet. So, you guys know every time you finish playing your instrument, uh, clarinet, flute, saxophone, you're supposed to clean it out with a cleaning swab, which is this a little uh, sort of cloth that's on a string and you're supposed to pull it through the clarinet. I don't have one, I don't have one on hand, but you, you take off your mouthpiece or your barrel and you drop it through and pull that through. So you really should do that to clean your clarinet. Uh, other than that, you, a clarinet and a flute and things like that, you're not supposed to clean them with water. Uh, brass instruments, you can give a, a brass instrument a bath where you take out all, and you should watch a video, a tutorial on that, where you have to take out all the moving parts and you can actually put the, the trumpet and the trombone in the bathtub and clean it out. But woodwinds, you don't put in the bath because they have all the pads that will get damaged. So just keep that swab every time you, you, uh, you play and that'll help keep it clean. Camera Wolf is asking, what is the most hardest instrument to play? Well, I would say, um, hmm, they're all difficult in their own way, but most people say that the ones that require the most, um, the ones that are the most difficult at the beginning probably are French horn and oboe. Those are probably the hardest ones at the beginning to kind of get started on. But as you get better and better, to really become a professional on any instrument requires pretty much the same amount of practice. So. Um, let's get a few more. There's camera checking in there. I'm glad I could answer your question for you. Pugster Josh is asking me, is the is the clarinet a jazz instrument? So that's a long answer. The short answer is yes, right? But I know a lot of kids want to know why their band director won't let them play clarinet in the jazz band. Has anyone here had that experience? Now some maybe you, like usually in a middle school jazz band, they'll have clarinets in there. But as you get into the more competitive jazz bands, like in maybe in high school, some directors, uh, many directors actually, will not have clarinets in the high school jazz band. And there's a reason for that. Basically, uh, in modern day jazz, maybe the past 50 years or so, clarinets are not so much a standard part of the big band. Back in the old days, 
uh, in the Dixieland and in uh, traditional jazz and the big band era, clarinet was a huge jazz instrument. They were they were in like every jazz song. But as things change over the years, clarinet became less and less common in jazz. So if you get your, your modern jazz band music for your high school big band, it's not going to come with a clarinet part. What we do have is we have saxophone players who do something called doubling, right? If you double, that means you play saxophone in a song, and then at a certain part in the music, it'll tell you to switch to clarinet, and you pick up your clarinet and you play that. So clarinet players, if you want to really get into jazz, I recommend that you learn how to double. You can, you can play clarinet and saxophone, and then you'll be a really, uh, you'll have a lot of chances to play in jazz bands. So, I hope that was not too long of an explanation. Dennis, why don't you throw us a question? When you're connected to the, or the bass clarinet, how do you improve articulation? How do you ar improve articulation on the clarinet? Right. On the bass clarinet. Well, I'd say improving articulation is the same on just about any reed instrument. It is a matter of, let me pick up my clarinet. So there's one part of it, which is just the speed and um, cleanliness that you can tongue your, your, uh, move your tongue on and off the reed. So we think two, 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 and without our sound, we go two, 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 two. So we work on exercises. Oh, Dr. Selfridge is the best. I'm going to get to your question next because <laughs> um, you've posted that a few times. So say you go, you start slow. So basically, anything you want to get better at in music, you ready for this? Anything you want to get better at in music, start practicing it slow with a steady beat and gradually increase the speed and go faster, faster, faster. And that's how you train your muscles to do just about anything you want in music. Okay, so we take it just to say an open G. And we want to go, let's start with T, 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 T. That's like a connected articulation. Two, 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 two. And then we do a separated articulation where we separate the air. Then we speed it up. And then we speed it up to 16th notes and things like that. And then maybe you take a scale and try like four 16th notes on each note. Just work on getting that cleanliness and consistency. So there is how you practice articulation. So we have our friend, um, oh, thank you, Dennis, for posting these questions. Um, Dr. Selfridge is the best, is asking, is there any instrument that I want to play in the future, and also what's the latest instrument I've learned how to play? Geometry player, thank you for checking in and answering Ryan's question. Uh, geometry dash player got the right answer on that arpeggio question. Um, any instrument that I would like to play, well, I kind of play them all. I'll tell you what I'd like to get better at. I would like to get better at my double reeds, oboe and bassoon. So those, speaking of instruments that are challenging, those are the ones that are most challenging for me uh, because it requires such a different set of muscles here. So I would like to start practicing my oboe and getting better at that. Um, and the most recent instrument I've really started working on, hmm, well, I've been working up. Mm, let me think. I, I've been working a lot on my piccolo playing. I had my piccolo out here the other day. Let me grab it. So I bar I have a piccolo here from our high school, and I've been practicing uh, adapting my flute skills to piccolo. It's a, it's a, it's a more focused aperture. Okay, so there's that question. Um, Ryan Watson, I think you got your question answered about an arpeggio. It's one, three, five, and sometimes an arpeggio can go one, three, five, seven. Usually in jazz, we arpeggiate to the seven. Okay, um, Dennis is giving me another question here. How do I trill D flat on the flute? Okay, so Dennis, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Robert, Robert Kreckel is asking about a, a flute trill on D flat. So first, I want to recommend that whenever you have a question about a trill, so a trill is when you go very fast between the note that's given 
and then you go one note higher in the scale. So if you see a D flat, that means they want you to play D flat. I'm going to assume it's a high D flat. Uh, a low D flat, a middle D flat, would be very hard to trill on the flute. It's, I'm going to guess it's a high D flat, but if you could um, confirm that for me. If you Google flute trill chart, it will show you every note and then the button you push to make it trill. But I'm just going to show you. Here's our D flat. So there's a D, D flat is open with the pinky. And then this key right here is going to make it go from a D flat to an E flat, very uh, back and forth. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's the right trill key, but you want to check that on a trill chart for the high D flat. Does that make sense? All right, good, Robert. Thank you for checking in. Um, I see Dennis is giving me some more questions. What's the latest one you did? Oh, Dennis gave me the trill question. Anything, uh, another question for, for us, Dennis? Yeah, uh, they did a song to this. Right now I play trumpet, and I'm going to change the French horn, but I'm going to be two years behind everyone. There are uh, no other French horn players in my class, so what should I do to practice? All right, I see, I see that now. Cadence Thompson is asking, right now I play trumpet, and I'm going to change the French horn, but you're going to be two years behind everyone. Okay, so really, first of all, First of all, I want to give you a, a shout out for Cadence for being willing to switch to French horn. Uh, because as a band director, I know that we always get a lot of trumpets in band, usually, because trumpet is, is a more popular instrument with beginners. But we always love to have more French horn players because we don't, we don't seem to get enough of those. And so as a French horn player, your band director is going to love having you play in the band. So the second thing is, don't necessarily, don't think about being two years behind as much. Really, you're not two years behind because the trumpet, you've already learned basically the correct embouchure for French horn. It's like very similar. So you're, you're already ahead on that game. You're not a beginner that way. And you're also not a beginner as, as far as the fingerings because the French horn fingerings are the same as the trumpet fingerings in the second octave. So I don't know how far you got on your, your trumpet fingerings, but uh, on a trumpet, the going from a high C up, C, D, E, F, G, it's the same way on French horn. It'll sound in a different key, but it's C, D, E, F, G. So you're already, on the right track with knowing just the basic physics of how these instruments work. French horn is, is very closely related to trumpet. So don't be too discouraged. You know, you're really not a beginner. You're, you're, it's gonna take you not too long to catch up, I don't think. I hope that helps. Um, I see uh, Mauricio has asked this question a few times um, about marching band tips. Where, is, where did Mauricio go? I wanna make sure I say your name right. But I believe Mauricio has asked a few times about marching band tips. And actually, that's a great uh, question. We're about to start marching band at my school. Uh, how many people, raise your hand if you are in the marching band at your school. Give me a, just give me a little uh, raise your hand or check in if you're in the marching band at your school. We are starting our marching band summer practices. Classy and Sassy is in there. Robert is in marching band. I'm going to give you as many shout-outs as I can. Wolfie wishes they were in marching band. Haley is. Joseph DeRosa was and graduated. Um, Tornado KK is uh, raising her, their hand. Uh, Life is Great is raising their hand. And, okay, d -ba, My Bad Note, Jay Flossen. So, marching band is a lot of fun, right? My big, one of my, okay, there's many tips I could give you about marching band. I think... The number one thing, not the number one, one of the top things I could say is um, spend as much time memorizing your marching band music outside of rehearsal as you can. Because the more you have your music memorized, and I mean like you're able to, you have it memorized where you don't even need the person next to you to sort of help you remember how it goes. 
you should memorize it so you are the person that everyone is listening to if they can't remember their part. You have to really know your part. Um, and the more you do that at home, when you get to marching band practice and you have to focus your attention onto where your spot is or how you're supposed to march, um, that will sort of let your, your music brain go on autopilot and you can focus your attention on keeping in the form and getting to your spot. So there's my, uh, there's my advice for you. Um, so just I'm thinking as I'm talking about marching band, guys, um, if you follow me at Dr. Selfridge on Instagram, uh, I'll give you a shout out. And also, I'll be posting some pictures from our marching band practices this summer. Uh, keep you guys uh, updated on what's going on in my teaching world. And uh, so if you get a chance uh, on Instagram, follow me at Dr. Selfridge, and I'll give you a shout out. Uh, Dennis just popped through another question. Um, what was the... I think you posted one, Dennis, that I missed it. What's the last one you put? Oh, here it Here's is. Here's the one because I, I, I know I've already asked this question, but I'm switching to a baritone. This is Robert Spreckle, mm -hmm. and I'm very excited to have tips on anything, switching to a baritone. Oh, so Robert, you're playing flute and baritone? Uh, that's pretty cool. Or maybe you're playing baritone and marching band. Um, yes. So, flute and marching band, I'm, I'm going to assume that you... Okay, so I'm going to assume you already play flute. So, so adding baritone from flute is a different change from uh, from French horn from trumpet to French horn. Okay, um, I would say spend some time working on your embouchure, getting a good sound, long tones. Uh, that's probably oh, I see. Switching to baritone for jazz, I'd say work on your long tones because getting that buzzing. <laughs> is a lot different than playing the flute. Uh, so I would say work on long tones on your baritone to get a really good tone going. The fingerings I don't think are gonna be too hard for you uh, because you're used to manipulating your fingers on the flute. Work on that tone, okay? So I haven't really played much today. Does anyone have any requests for me to play something? What instrument should I play? I have my alto sax, I haven't played that yet today. Okay, so I'm getting uh, instrument requests. How about song requests? If, it depends what song I know of what I'm going to play, what instrument I'm going to play it on. So if you have any requests, I've been working. I know you guys, we talked about this last time. Um, a, lot of the, uh, a lot of the young kids... Are, have been asking for uh, that new popular song, um, Old Town Road. And actually, it's, a, it's got a nice melody to it. I've been figuring it out uh, because I'm going to do a video tutorial on it. simple melody, right? I just played it on alto. Um, I'll play it on flute. And f it's in the key of, uh, it's in the key of, you ready for this? A flat minor. Um, Dennis, you ever hear that joke? What do you, <laughs> what do you get when you drop a, a piano down a mine shaft? A flat minor. Yeah, it's a band director joke. Um, Okay, Wolfie Snow says they're going to drive their school crazy if, if you learn this. Uh, that's like all there is to it. There's another part that he sings on the verse, um, but that's the main part. Um, Old Town Road on trumpet. Or Leith wants me to play Old Town Road on trumpet. It's a little bit more challenging on trumpet because it gets into a bit of a high range. Like you can play it low. It sounds kind of, yeah, I don't know if it sounds too good playing it low. I'm not warmed up at all on the trumpet.
Oh, Orla. Okay, got it, Orla. Thank you for correcting that. So that's on trumpet. You could play it up high, but it gets pretty high. It goes B flat to F. So if you can play those high notes up to a high F on the staff, you could play that. I think I got every instrument. Um, any other requests, you guys? We're about, man, we're already 25 minutes, 26 minutes. Um, okay, Wolfie is asking me a personal question. I don't think it's that personal. That's a good question. Um, what inspired me to be in band? So that's a great question. Um, Robert, I don't really know that song. I could, I could uh, look it up and try to figure out how to play it. I mean, I know the song, but I'm, I'm not sure I could play it on the flute right now. That's a great song, though. I love that song. Um, so, Wolfie. Um, I would say I joined band in fifth grade, mostly because my friends were joining. But I also liked music. I, I really always liked music when I was a kid. But I didn't really necessarily think I was going to do band as my career. Um, okay, Robert, that would be great. That'd be great. Um, I could also, you can send it to me on Instagram or I can always just Google it. Usually if I'm looking for a song, I just Google it. Um, but then I stayed in band all the way through middle school. And then when I got into high school, what really happened is I got into high school band and high school band was just such a different thing from middle school. Everyone was better. And I started to get into playing in jazz band and concert band. And I just, so light bulb just turned on and I became obsessed with playing music. And that's what happened. I just decided I was going to play music and be a teacher. So that's my story. Adrian, thank you for following me on flute, or not on flute, thank you for following me on Instagram. Uh, Tornado is saying, just want to say thank you for Barry Sachs because it's going great so far. And I'm super confident. That's awesome, Tornado. Uh, thank, I'm, I'm glad it's working out for you. Uh, good luck with your jazz band audition. Let me know if you have any questions about that. Uh, let me just say hello to Apple Studios. Hi, Apple Studios. Um, let's see. Orle is asking for See You Again on Trumpet. I'll play a little bit of that, sure. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Hi, Sunday, Alexander. <laughs> Francesco, I saw you on Facebook. Uh, you're, on, you're on vacation, right? I want to say hi to Francesco, who's still watching me, even though he's on vacation in Bulgaria. Orla. I'm sorry, Orla. I'll get it. That's a nice song. Hooded Kermit, I'll answer a question if you want to send me a question, okay? Um, Turbo Shots is asking me about Baker Street on the alto sax. I think I did that in a previous live stream. Um, that's a good one to, to do a video on, so I will add that one to my list. Thank you for that suggestion. Um, so Dennis, we're, we're on the lookout for a question from Hooded Kermit. Whoops. Okay. Um, see what he's going to ask. Um, in the meantime, you, you may want to give a shout out to Geo Dash Player twenty six thirty eight who's been answering a lot of questions for people on there. Oh yeah, Geo Dash. I noticed that earlier, so I want to give a shout out to Geo Dash. Um, is it two thirty eight? But twenty six thirty eight. Twenty six thirty eight. So Geo Dash, um, I really appreciate you checking in and answering. Uh, a lot of the questions that people are having, because as you guys know, I can't get to all the questions. There we go. There's, there's Ge Ge Geometry Dash answering again. Uh, Geo, that's 
probably one of the ones I definitely would recommend as well, the Fairling Etude book. That's a great book. Um, Luz, Luz, or Luz is asking, do you need a cleaning swab for clarinet? Yes, you do. Um, I think I talked about that at the beginning of the stream. Maybe you missed it, but you should use a cleaning swab on your uh, clarinet. Usually you get one when you get a new clarinet, okay? Um, so, Hooded Kermit, okay. There, he, there they are. Wants me to play the Avengers, the Avengers theme on, on, on alto sax. I think I have a video on this. Uh, I got to remember what key it's in. So there's the main part of the Avengers theme. And it looks like Hooded says that you played it at your talent show. How did that go? Did that go well? I hope that was uh, fun. Um, okay, so before we go, uh, I would like to, uh, let's do a little check-in. So can you all let me know um, what instrument you play? I always do a check-in of where you're watching from. So let me know what instrument you play and where you are watching from. So we have, some, we have Olivia plays the clarinet, Orla plays trumpet, Turbo plays alto sax, Apple Studios is in Texas, Orla is in Ireland, uh, Devon, ooh, this is going by fast now, uh, Josh is in California and plays the trumpet, and Josh Williams is far away, uh, Hooded Kermit is in Delaware, very close to where I am. Sunday is watching from Qatar and plays the trumpet. Uh, and Francesco plays alto and tenor sax and is from Italy. I hope you're having a great time on your vacation, Francesco. Um, Gabe is in Hawaii. So Gabe, our um, high school band is taking a big trip in April. We are going to be traveling to Hawaii for our band trip in April. So maybe we'll see you there. Um, Tornado plays bass clarinet in West Virginia. Uh, Monica plays flute and lives in West Virginia. Robert plays flute in PA. Um, let's see. Haley uh, plays flute and, and uh, piccolo from Tennessee. Uh, Misty is in flute. Is in Canada. Plays the flute. Um, da, 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 da. Let's see. Good check-ins, guys. Thank you. Samir is in Melbourne. Uh, let me just answer one or two more questions and then I am going to check out for the week. As I said, it's an exciting week for me. I get back to marching band practice on Wednesday. Let's see. Dennis, is there one that I've been missing? Someone has been asking many times or anything like that? No, there's one that was early on and we never quite got to it. Somebody was asking, how do I get better at the snare drums? Ah, how do you get better at snare drum? Um, I would say it's, it's very similar to any other instrument. Take a, uh, something you need to work on. Just pick one thing. So for snare drum, let's say maybe you're working on your paradiddles and you work on them slowly first and you always, especially for snare drum. Okay, Robert, thank you. Um, especially for snare drum, you need to use a metronome when you practice the metronome. The old-fashioned metronome used to go back and forth and go but now we have digital metronomes, we have metronomes on the computer. They give you the steady tempo because just like it's very rare for a person to have perfect pitch, it's very rare for a person to have perfect tempo. We need a, the, the computer metronome to help us tell if we're speeding up or slowing down. So you put on that metronome at a, a slow tempo and you start with whatever skill you're working on. Say a paradiddle, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, and you gradually speed up the tempo. Make sure you don't speed up the tempo if you're still making mistakes. If you're still making little mistakes, you stay at that tempo until you get it, and then you increase the tempo. So there's a 
tip for you. Um, Luz is also asking, do you need a stick of corkeries for clarinet? Uh, yes, you do. And Jay Flawson asked, answered that question. You do need uh, a stick of cork grease for clarinet. So before I go, um, thank you all for the check-ins and the shout-outs. Um, I'll be back next week, of course. Um, just a reminder, if you follow me on Instagram at Dr. Selfridge, uh, I'll be posting pictures of I'll, I'll post a picture from my marching band practice this Wednesday and any other fun stuff. I have a couple of videos up there of a concert that I played a few weeks ago, so you get to hear me play my instruments a little bit more. Um, and so thank you, those of you who followed me today on the stream. Uh, and Hooded Kermit is going to shout out Dr. Selfridge. Oh, Hooded Kermit, do you have a, a YouTube channel? Thank you for giving me that shout out. I'll check out your YouTube channel, okay? Um... Big Dog 345 is saying, please answer my question. Big Dog, what's your question before I go? Okay. And Queen Lara is not allowed to have an Instagram, and I totally understand. I know I have followers of all ages, so if your parents don't ha let you have an Instagram, or that's totally fine. That's Many parents have rules like that, and that's A-OK. -okay. Um, when you get older, make sure and you're allowed to follow me on Instagram. Go ahead and do that. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm waiting for that question from my buddy Big Dog, who has, if you have a question, check in with it. Um, there we go, Big Dog, how do you hit notes higher than F sharp on the trumpet? Okay, well, um, okay, so building up high, I know, yeah, Big Dog, so the thing about playing high notes on trumpet, and this will be the last question I'll answer today, um, but... High notes on trumpet is a combination of building up your lip strength, your muscle strength. It's also learning how to direct your airstream. I know a lot of professional trumpet players I talk to talk about the, 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 the way you direct your airstream helps you with your notes. So if you think ah with your, with your notes and your tongue is flat, or if you think e with your notes, your tongue goes up in the back and you get that different way of the airstream moving. So when I'm doing my different notes on the trumpet, like my buzzing, when I arch my tongue, thank you, Liella, for following me, Panic at the Disco. <coughs> Getting that higher pitch on the buzz and on my trumpet, I'm bringing my tr tongue up in the back. Ah, <coughs> And so that is a really good way to, to build that up. And so, uh, I've heard uh, other trumpet players do do a pattern and just work your way up like a C scale. And now my range is not that great on trumpet because I don't play trumpet every day. I, I practice saxophone more. So I hope that helps. Um, uh, there are some great resources out there on developing your upper range in the trumpet if you Google that. Okay, so that is the end of my live stream today. I want to say thank you, Dennis. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you. And uh, I'll be back next week uh, with, with more songs and uh, more things to talk about. And thank you all for joining me. Uh, and I will see you guys next week. Make sure you practice at home, even though it's summertime. Keep practicing so you keep those skills going for next school year. Okay, guys. See you next time.